Cafe Ehe. Welcome to Cafe Anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. And the podcast, the only podcast to broadcast from Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. Mike's Daily Podcast. Welcome to F- F- episode 2571. It's fun. It's someone listening to the show. It might be you. It might be me. I don't know. It could be a bee flying around going, oh, this podcast is absolutely the best thing I've ever heard. We, I'm going to make some honey. And did you know that? Mike's Daily Podcast. There are so many layoffs going off on, off and on here. Mike's In the Bay Area. Daily. With all of the podcasts. With all the tech places. Yeah. Which... To even have a job at a tech company. Okay, so I work in radio, which does not pay well, y'all. Just so you know. People are like, wait, there's still there's still such a thing as radio? Yes, there is. There's a thing called radio and people, people still listen to it. People like it. People are uh, influenced by it, maybe. There's still this... Belief, which is very true, that if you have a if you go through a big emergency, the first thing you're going to do is turn on the radio. Chances are you probably won't have internet because that'll all go down. But if you have a radio with batteries in it, you don't have to worry about connection to a power source like the electric company, the PG&E. They'll be down too. So the the best way. Is to listen to the airwaves And the airwaves And this goes back to way back Before you and I were born The airwaves It was designed In the very beginning That they would be the public airwaves They belong to you and me So that means radio stations Have to tell us what's going on And keep us informed In case of an emergency So And here's today's And that, by the way, is the reason why AM radio will never die. Because AM radio has much better coverage than an FM signal. Did you know that? The podcast picture is of some picture I took recently. I think maybe today or yesterday. I forget. But see it at mikesdailypodcast.com. Yes, the AM radio, it it doesn't need to see with an FM signal. Signal. You have to be able to see the transmitter Or Have Even if you can't see it Because it's so far away The late great Basil the Boxer He He actually I took him to a transmitter one time And said That's a transmitter And he said I don't care Let's go chase rabbits Because dogs love to chase rabbits And cats love to chase birds and mice And the thing is, I got sidetracked again. But yes, AM radio signals can bounce around. You can hear them all over the place. You can, there are people like in Norway, in really deserted areas, like in Iceland, at the top of the world somewhere, that are picking up radio stations all around the world. And they contact the radio stations and say, I heard your radio station. I was listening to it in my little hut. And I had my special antenna, but I was able to hear your radio station. The Swedish, what I was going for. Maybe that was Norwegian. My mom had a good friend who was Norwegian named George. George the Norwegian. And he sounded a little bit like that. But hey, that's an, that is a language that yours truly will never learn. I can do the accent. A cartoonish version of it, sorry, Norwegians. But you have a beautiful country. And I did do a, what, you know, you, I think it's in the sixth grade, you, you're, or fifth grade. Fourth grade. Fourth grade, they usually make, third grade, they make you do a report on states. One of the states in the United States of America. And then I think fourth grade, you have to do a report on a country. And yours truly, yours truly did one on Norway because of George, the Norwegian. I said, hey, 
George, what can you tell me about Norway? And he told me about all the fjords. And that's spelled with a J. Fjords. And the beautiful country that, that, that it is. The point is that there are a lot of people being let go in the Bay Area. It is a lot of tech companies saying goodbye. So much so that somebody in the California State Legislature wants to pass a law that says that companies have to, if they're going to let more than 50 people go, they got to give them 90 days notice. They can't just fire them on the spot. They got to let them go within 90 days, which I don't know if you've worked that out in your head, but that's all kinds of awkward for that company. Yeah, Mike, we're letting you go. But don't pack your box just yet You got 90 days to do it So kind of stretch it out over 90 days But that's what they want to do To try and uh, soften the blow To the tech workers That make oh so much money In radio not so much money Even though we're helping the public With important emergency information Tech companies uh, Some really bad catastrophe And just about all the inventions they come up with will be dead. Nice big electromagnetic pulse that hits the globe. All the stuff they come up with, all their computer stuff dead. I think. I don't know. I read a sci-fi novel now and then. Just like those weather engineering people, conspiracy theorists. Is it that... Is it... If you read a lot of sci-fi... Is that when you become more conspiracy theory prone and believe in a dark cabal in Silicon Valley that's manipulating all the elections? The front panel will close and manipulating the big the big health, the big med, please remain seated. The big pharma manipulating our bodies with their genetically engineered sci-fi stuff. Is that what happens? When you read too much sci-fi As we go outside a cafe anyway Where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Pod Castro Valley The last place on earth And I have a cat on my lap Again Anyway Little Rocky Oh the late great Basil the Boxer Would not like you But that's okay You'd probably thwack him in the face And you two You would, would become friends after that It is interesting how Rocky gets along with Patches. Oh, I posted a couple pictures of Patches in the past, which you can see at mikesdailypodcast.com. Patches is a stray cat, and he adopted us about a year and a half ago, and he's still with us. And when we got Rocky here in October of last year, we were like, "Uh uh-oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to do around Rocky? And the two they play And it looks like they get a little rough sometimes But the, it, Rocky loves it The kitten loves it now Rocky is about almost 8 years old uh, 8 months old now Patches is probably about 5 6 years old And they do this cat play It's pretty interesting But the point is People that work in tech make a lot of money And they got let go A lot of them got let go And there's people in California that are like, oh, all the money, all the taxes, all the crazy home prices, everything that we that we have that we make the big property tax money off of and all the crazy stuff we can charge is all because of big tech being in California and we don't want them to go. So let's make these crazy rules that make everyone feel awkward because they're working 90 days longer and hey. I'm going to stay that entire 90 days and stand in front of my boss's office and make him feel like just horrible. That's where we'll be in California with these kind of laws. Because we have, uh, we overregulate here in California. When I lived in Alabama, they underregulate. There's all kinds of trash everywhere in some places. You're just like, does anyone care? Oh, wait, they got no rules. This is like uh, the guy that owns the property. He's not going to get fined for having a car that's broken down and on fire in front of his house. We have that too here in California, but maybe that's, is there too much regulation or not enough? You let me know. 
at 510, because that's where we are in the Bay Area, that area code, 510-228-4640, 510-228-4640. So yes, radio has to do that. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that radio stations have to give you the latest news when a when, uh, big emergency happens. The emergency alert system takes over. Your favorite radio station And it's supposed to give you information That's why those Amber Alerts shut down Your favorite radio station And bring you important news about someone Abducting someone But The fact is AM radio goes where FM radio signals cannot go So AM radio will be with us Despite the fact that electric vehicles Can't seem to come up with a way of making AM radio work in their cars which is absolutely ridiculous Elon Musk can put somebody in space He invents all this stuff And he can't figure out how to make an AM radio Work in one of his cars Just come on Go that extra mile Eon. You're such an underachiever But another tech company Not Tesla But Meta Is it interesting that Zuckerberg wanted his company to sound a little more like Tesla have his instead of it being Facebook, he wanted to make it sound like Tesla. So he couldn't come up with Tesla. He came up with Meta. Meta stock rose after reports of more layoffs. The job cuts reported by Bloomberg would come on top of the eleven thousand that were announced in November. Lots of layoffs going off or on, going off and on in the Bay Area. Now, if you did want an electric vehicle or any new car, check it out. Trade in values have the when you trade in a car to get that new one, whether it be an electric vehicle or something else new and spiffy, the trade in value hit a high. But this was back in June. Why these numbers are being released now, I'm not sure, but. Trade-in values hit a high in June of 2022 of over $25,000, almost $26,000. You could get $26,000 for your used car. The average transaction price for a used vehicle peaked at $31,300 in April of 2022. So a used vehicle went for over $31,000 in April of 2022. A report found that 1.89% of auto loans in January were severely delinquent and at least 60 days behind payment. So people still getting new cars can't necessarily pay for it. The highest rate since 20. Since 2000 Since 2006 So we haven't had this kind of delinquency Going on since just before The big economic downturn Recession thingy Auto loan borrowers Are falling behind As inflation eats away At consumer spending power That must mean those repo men those Emilio Estevez's are being very popular these days. They're making a lot of money repossessing cars. I would not want that job. Do you know my mom was kind of a repo woman? My late mom. Uh, she had for over a decade a video store. And there were times when people would, oh, forget or be lazy as people tend to be lazy in human nature. To be lazy it is Found that that is true In people's That they would be too lazy To bring her back The the tapes that they would rent The VHS tapes back then This was in the 80s And 90s And so she would go to their Some, of the, some sketchy neighborhoods in Oxnard, California And demand Her <laughs> tape Hey you've got my tape Give it here Well I don't have the money to pay for all the the late fees Just I don't care at this point Just give me the tape We're done Bye 
Yes, she did that quite often. I, as her son, I was always worried for her about that. As her son, should I have gone and done it? Well, it was nice of her not to ask me. <laughs> Maybe that should have been my new job as a repo man for videotapes. And then I wouldn't have gotten into radio, which doesn't pay as well, probably. But Best Buy is going to set up in-home hospital care. And this includes things like monitors for heart rate, uh, blood oxygen level monitors, and other monitors of vital and vitals, you know, stuff. And train the patient or others in the home how to use the devices. The data would then be shared securely with doctors and nurses. Speaking of that sort of hospital care, there is a show that I discovered recently on Acorn TV, which was free last week if you had Xfinity or Comcast. But Acorn TV has a show called The Good Karma Hospital or something like that. And it involves a young lady in England who gets tired of England uh, She breaks up With her boyfriend Or her bro- her boyfriend Breaks up with her And Out of Just her anger And wanting something new She moves to India And becomes A nurse at a hospital there And she thinks It's going to be A nice hospital Really modern Upscale Turns out It is one In a Pretty poor area And there is A lot of Resources That they don't have At their immediate disposal and she learned she has to be not just the doctor that she is. She she treats children. Now she has to learn how to treat older people, uh, how to do surgery, how to do all kinds of things, even some veterinary stuff. She has to become an all-purpose doctor. And it's a pretty good show. Very interesting. There are a lot of British actors in there. Caucasian, Indian, all types. The gal from the last season of Doctor Who when Jodie Whittaker was the doctor. The one that she ends up having a relationship. I forgot her name. But uh, she isn't that actress who dates Jodie Whittaker is in the show too. So yeah, we got hooked on it. We're, we've, I think we've seen four episodes so far. And finally, as we had a cat on my lap recently And Rocky took off And we heard the late great Baz the Boxer earlier in the show Pets Pet products Pet care There is a national industry For pets And you know how much money is involved? 103.6 billion dollars 40% of the revenue Is from food and treats Just 40% More Almost half Of the revenue comes from food and treats Alone The pet industry Grew By 11.6% Last year And has grown by At least 11% Every single year The average pet owning household Spends About 1,000 Dollars per year on their pets A little over a thousand dollars In fact it breaks down Into if you have a small dog Every year you're spending at least $737 A medium sized dog about $894 A large dog you're spending Over a thousand dollars And a cat A little over eight hundred dollars The lifetime cost of a dog Is around $15,000 $15,000 But yet You shouldn't look at it that way you, you should look at how you're Helping Hopefully you're adopting a stray Or not a stray But you know A, a dog that Or a cat That needs to be rescued That has no that, the, the, that needs you basically And then you'll be bringing a bunch of joy to this animal And that animal will be bringing joy to you And will show their thanks A myriad of ways Over 
his or her lifetime. Globally, the pet industry is worth $232 billion. Two corporations consume almost half of the pet industry's market share. Do you know what they are? They both start with the word pet. Yes, Petco and PetSmart. I always preferred Petco over PetSmart. PetSmarts tend to be huge, but I don't know, maybe Petco or PetSmart has gotten better. PetSmart usually, in California anyway, has a bunch going on. They have uh, kennels inside, you know, where they'll, they'll watch your dog for the day. They've got baths. I think Petco's have baths. Here in the Bay Area, we also have Pet Food Express. Not affiliated, I don't think, with Petco or PetSmart. I just, Rocky just came back because he thought this part of the conversation was interesting. You like this part of the podcast? Okay, he's back on my lap. Yeah, they got baths at these places generally. Uh, Maybe some vets. Before you add a four-legged member to the family, make sure you understand the cost of owning a pet by examining your budget and setting aside the right amount for your furry friend. Did you know, I think this is households in the U.S., 67% have a pet. Upfront costs may include the cost of adopting the pet. Uh, There might be The cost for vaccinations. Definitely you want to do that. Get your pet vaccinated. And then training. Training, depending on the pet, could be... I I, I say for any dog that you adopt, definitely go through some kind of training with him or her if you have not gone through pet training before. And ongoing costs, of course. Of course, food. This little guy, Rocky, needs to eat. (laughs) Maybe that's why he's on my lap. He's like, feed me, Mike. Outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, the last place on earth. Also grooming. But with cats, you don't really need to do grooming. And then Basil, the late great Basil, the boxer didn't need grooming because he was a short haired dog. Boxers don't really, their hair grows only a certain amount and then it falls out. But yes, you have a lot of dogs that have hair like humans. So it needs to be clipped, it needs to be cut. And then the medical expenses. Wow. And that did get expensive with Basil. Very expensive, especially towards the end. So all of that to consider, but you cannot put a price on the amount of joy that a dog or a cat gives you. And then, of course, the amount of joy you're bringing them. I've got a happy purring cat right now on my lap. And... Uh, He's just staring there looking at me. What are you doing? He's saying, I have no idea what I'm doing, Rocky, but thanks for the question. Hey, we're outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Last podcast was called Babbling, which I was babbling a little bit today here as well, but look who's here. <laughs> Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? That's a disgruntled field player. Tell you what. What? Why is your cat looking at me? And Benita like all strange like I don't know I just did Something about your voices Kind of throws them for a loop That's okay Mark I like a cat Bye 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 I gotta go And there she went She left And went back inside cafe anyway Fascinating Look who else is here Hello Mark I make the delicious food for your house right now <laughs> Oh, I'd love to have that. Mm. That's delicious. <coughs> uh. What was in that root beer? Tell you, oh boy. Oh no. Why is your cat looking at me all weird? I don't know. Maybe the, the just the way, you, just the way you are, just the way you look tonight. <sighs> Drink it now, cut you. I'm not going to drink any more of that because no more cat hair. Hey, I I would really like to suggest to you to please listen to the last podcast. Uh, just to just to go back in time to 1989, because I featured a little bit of me being on the radio in 1989 when I was 20, one of my first radio jobs at a station in Santa Barbara called Y97. 
And oh my gosh, the music and that guy, the professor of rock, said the same thing. Something about the music in 1989. It was just pretty... I, I, it was good. It was. I miss it. I, I listen when I hear this uh, tape and I listen back to me. I'm like, gosh, Mike, you had no idea what kind of great music you were playing. Being there on the Top 40 station, playing the stuff that was the hits. There was Guns N' Roses. There was Def Leppard. There was Janet Jackson. Who else? Oh, I, I was playing Squeeze. To those of you who might know that British band, I got to meet the lead singer, or was it Glenn Tilbrook or Chris Difford? I met one of the guys from Squeeze. I, I used to live in downtown Ventura, and I would drive past the Majestic Ventura Theater every night on my way home. And I worked at the country station in the 90s and into the O's. And on my way home, as I as I got home probably about one o'clock in the morning, I'd be passing by the Majestic Ventura Theater just as they were ending a concert. And whoever was performing, sometimes they would be out back signing autographs. And sure enough, there was one of the guys from Squeeze. So I parked the car, ran over, because I, I saw, I'm like, that's that guy. And I walked over and he's signing autographs. And I go, I loved your live album, Round and About. And he's like, oh, thank you. That's all I could come up with. But there's you know, a bunch of people there. and I, had, I just had to do my Chris Farley thing. You know that song you did, that album called Round and About? That was so cool. And I did that. And I did this podcast for you. And I hope you enjoyed it. But you can tell me either way at 510-228-4640. It's been an amazing couple of months here in the year 2023. With all these layoffs going on with the tech world. And don't forget, too, that we're, we're getting out of COVID. COVID hasn't gone away. By the grace of God, I shall say, I got COVID not till the very, very end. Just a few months ago. Well, around Christmas. It was not nice getting COVID around Christmas. But still, I was thankful for the fact that took so long to get COVID and at that point I had been vaccinated and the, the the real crux of the emergency had left and even though it was not nice to go through COVID it would have been 20 times worse had I not been vaccinated so but it's interesting how now we're all starting to look back finally some of us have been go 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 and to look back and to think what happened in 2020 we forget you know when it all came down at the beginning there was no vaccine so we didn't know if you caught it or were we going to die there were a lot of people dying so it there was a threat and a lot of us lost jobs cuz all of a sudden oh well we got to close down or we can't keep you cuz the nobody's going to be coming into our com- our business anymore because of the shutdown. All kinds of layoffs happened. A lot of people decided to retire. I don't know if you heard about that, but a lot of people, in fact, there are a lot of people that just ended up retiring because they got let go. They said, no, I'm done. So that's why there's a lot of people that still haven't gotten back into the workforce. And then there were a lot of people that said, uh, I, you know, they were so overworked. Maybe they were an essential worker and they were extra, extra busy. And there was all the anxiety involved with that. It still hasn't gone away. And then don't forget the kids getting taught through Zoom, which is not a natural state for most kids to sit in front of a computer And try and interact with people through that. It's hard enough for a grown person to do, let alone a small child. Yes, we went through a lot. I think my point is just just to sit there and recognize what we went through. And we probably didn't do everything correctly. We were building the plane as we were flying it. So a lot of mistakes were made. 
And hopefully we look back at this And it was a time Unlike any other Maybe similar to some Pandemics we've had in the past You know the big, the big, big, big ones was the what was that flu? The flu at the turn of the last century. That, but I mean, it was a different time back then, obviously. And now, in a, the tech age, we had a our first big, huge pandemic. So hopefully, we learn from that, remember from it, and get you know apply it to the future so that we have a better future together. That's all I'm hoping for. And that a frame wraps up the show. By telling you other ways to reach me Next show it'll be the wonderful mm, Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley How about that? Thank you so much Give your pet a big hug Thanks for listening Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced And performed by Mike Matthews His podcast is super easy to find Download or listen to his show And read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.